Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamers.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD. Specifically, the company are finally in the green, if you will. Excuse the pun, because they are profitable once again. Plus, as well, we have some news comprising of the Ryzen notebooks. So we'll get into that in a moment. Then we'll move over to the developers of Super Lucky's Tales, because they have confirmed that not only is the Xbox X considerably more powerful than the Xbox One at the moment, unsurprising, but they actually expect the gap to continue to grow with the console because they feel that there's a lot more horsepower that's still yet to be tapped. And then finally, on a somewhat different mode for the Xbox, guess what? Yep, Connect is dead and I don't think many of us are going to be sad. But we're going to start things out with AMD, because we have the company very much being profitable. The Gap EPS of $0.07 cents a share and has beaten revenue projections by a rather startling $139 million US dollars. Lee Sisu has issued a statement, strong customer adoption of our new high-performance products drove significant revenue growth and improved financial results from a year ago. Our third quarter new product introductions and financial execution mark another important milestone as we establish AMD as a premier growth company in the technology industry. Of course, there are a lot of products which AMD have released over the past 12 or so months. Since the introduction of Polaris itself, which of course debuted with the RX 400 series, AMD were definitely kind of on the up and up. But really, to me, Ryzen has been the architecture which we can attribute a lot of the growth for. Not only has Ryzen for the desktop been incredibly successful, but it spawned Epic on the server side and Threadripper for the high-end desktops. Vega, sure, it does have some issues, but still... Driver revisions have certainly pegged the processor, uh, graphics processor to be pretty impressive overall. It certainly isn't a Pascal killer, but it's not a bad GPU either. And the fact of the matter is, it's very good for compute. In fact, all of AMD's uh, solutions are, and AMD know this, and have subsequently just recently updated their drivers. So now you can have 12 various Radeon graphics cards in your system at once, or performing compute tasks. On top of that... They have the semi-custom processor business, which of course is the PlayStation 4, the PS4 Pro, the Xbox uh, One, as finally the Xbox One X. And Lisa Souk believes that their semiconductor business continues to perform as expected for the year, and we anticipate seasonal demand to be healthy as customers enter the holiday sales cycles with the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Now, they do believe that the semi-custom revenue will be a little bit lower, uh, because they've been in the fifth year of this cycle, in other words, they've been producing these chips for some time now. So, they do believe that the actual units, the number of units shipped, will be lower, but they still believe that because of the launch of these new systems, particularly the Xbox One X, they do believe that it's going to have a still pretty damn good product value. And remaining on the subject of Camp AMD, we should also be seeing volume introduction of Ryzen and notebooks and this is going to be with Acer, HP and Lenovo. This has been once again confirmed by Lisa Su and has said that yes, originally we heard the reports of course of August this year that these chips are going to be available. Uh, Ryzen and Vega basically come together in an advanced APU so we're going to see limited shipments popping up over the next several weeks but it looks like the Premier, the Premium notebooks are going to be launching in Q1 2018. And personally, I, I think no one who's watching this channel really would disagree that this is good news. Whether you're a staunch Intel fan, whether you're a hardened NVIDIA fan, or whether you've been sticking through um, the issues that AMD have had with uh, some of their less successful processor launches, and even the issues of the GPU division, specifically that they just didn't have a high-end product, which did certainly push a lot of folks to NVIDIA. There's one thing that we can all agree. Competition's good, because competition means that, well, other companies pull the finger out their asses. It's that simple. And I don't know about you, but I just love the idea of high-end competition. 
because it obviously drives all companies, and that includes Intel, that includes NVIDIA, to basically step up to the plate. I feel, and I many feel, what I'm about to say is not a secret, that Intel were a bit like Odia when Ryzen dropped. Because, yes, we predicted it was going to be fairly successful. Yes, we predicted it was going to, I don't like to use the word, but shake up the marketplace a bit. But I don't think Intel predicted the atomic bomb. And there are multiple ways you can tell that Intel have been rattled. Uh, just the very... I would I would actually say hastened launch of Coffee Lake. It just I wouldn't say came out of nowhere, but it they certainly moved up the launch list a little bit. Second thing, um, and perhaps most obvious, is the way they're dealing with advertising, customers and PR and marketing. Just a few years ago, it sucked quite frankly, covering Intel products. And I don't mean that as in the products weren't good, I don't mean that as in the products weren't stable, but from a tech perspective, they often just did not provide good slides, they didn't provide insight into the chips, and it was just really messy. Um, and you can see this yourself, like if you're looking for marketing slides, for example, of, uh, let's say, Skylake or Haswell, I'm not saying that you couldn't find them. Please don't tell. Please don't uh, misconstrue what I'm saying. But if you were to see how prevalent AMD were with Ryzen, and then how prevalent uh, AMD were with Threadripper or Vega, and yes, we can debate all day long that they were perhaps a little generous with Vega, but that's not the point. They had so much marketing material that you almost felt that you could design the chips yourself. And I think one of the reasons that AMD was so open is because they wanted to, of course, in, uh, impart on customers' confidence. Intel just didn't feel they needed to do that, and they were very secretive. And uh, they still are not quite where I'd want them to be, and certainly not to the level of openness that AMD or even NVIDIA are, to be totally honest. But it's definitely getting much better, and that's good for the for the consumer, because that means that we as tech enthusiasts are definitely going to have a better time of being able to actually cover the product. Okay, Xbox One X everybody. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be buying an Xbox One X. God, I could not pronounce that, could I? So are you going to be buying Project Scorpio? Are you going to be getting the limited edition? Let me know, because I think it's going to be a very cool console. Anyway, Specifically, we're going to be talking a couple of aspects of the Xbox One uh, ecosystem, but we'll start things out with the performance. There's been a lot of discussion on just how powerful the Xbox One X actually is. Another architecture is very similar. It has, after all, just essentially an overclocked CPU. Yes, the GPU is more advanced, and yes, it switched to GDDR5 memory and drastically more bandwidth, but architecturally, it's very similar. And it is, of course, just a more powerful revision of the current generation. But there is an interview which is pretty much on, well, target, if you excuse the pun, because GameSpot has been discussing with the CEO of Playful Corp. His name is Paul Bettner. Uh, the interview specifically revolves around Super Lucky's Tale. Now, the developer... Uh, basically tells us that the performance delta between 1080p 30Hz and 4K 60Hz is very similar across the two pieces of hardware. I just want to put this into some level of perspective of the level of performance difference that you're actually asking for here. Rounding up very much, you're looking around 2 million pixels for 1080p compared to a native frame buffer of 4K is running at around 8 million pixels. Yes, I'm uh, simplifying those numbers, and of course 30 hertz versus 60 hertz means you only get half the amount of time to render each frame of animation. Of course, Super Lucky's Tales is not, you know, a massive AAA game with the kind of budgets of something like, I don't know, The Witcher 3. But even so, there are some good um, signs here, because the developer has been very keen to stress that porting the game to the Xbox One X and targeting this higher resolution, this higher frame rate, was incredibly easy. There wasn't that much you had to do. And this is actually very similar to what we've heard from other developers, including uh, when they ported Forza to the system. Basically, the porting process is very easy. 
So if all the developers want to do is to improve the quality, improve the textures, improve the lighting a little bit, especially if they're also releasing a PC port, it's just not that uh, difficult at all. But here's the crux of the matter. Uh, I'll read this quote out for Baton, but I think there will be developers that push the Xbox One X even further than we have. I mean, we're one of the first to get a development kit, and we're one of the first games shipping natively on this device, but it's always the case that once more people start getting their hands on the hardware and have worked out uh, with it longer and they've started to squeeze more ways to get performance out of it, the gap between the two devices is probably going to grow over time. The Xbox One, at this point, is a well-understood piece of hardware, has a lot of optimizations and work that's already been done, but for the Xbox One X, that's just starting. So in other words, don't be surprised if the performance and difference between these two machines and the visual um, improvements that we also see are going to continue to increase. And that is certainly good news for Microsoft, who obviously are very keen to get you to buy the new system. Finally, from one thing Microsoft are keen for you to buy, to one that, well, they're not so keen for you to buy, and that is Kinect. Um, I think most would agree that Kinect has not had the best history when it comes to the Xbox One X, it, uh, sorry, the Xbox One, when it was first avail, uh, unveiled, people were like, why is this even here? Many gamers just were disappointed because they felt it was increasing the price of the console. Not only that, of course, but most associate Connect with the issues of uh, always online. They felt it was spying on them, and obviously some of these things are completely unfounded, but they felt it was spying on them. It also increased the price of the system, uh, which for just... If you, all you wanted to do is use the controller, it was obviously a bad thing. But on top of that, um, some of these changes and some of the things they actually did, like incorporating some of the actual functions on the, the actual APU, the SOC of the Xbox One, basically the ate up die space. And so because it ate up die space, you guessed it, it made the system less powerful. And I think most would agree that if the Xbox One had not shipped with Kinect, and instead it had been more like the Xbox 360 where it had been optional and they had not dedicated so much time, so much resources to the damn thing. I'm not saying it would have beat the PlayStation 4 uh, in terms of sales because no one can predict that history, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it did pretty damn well. However, Microsoft have confirmed that the production of motion-controlled uh, Kinect is done. Uh, this is according to Co.Design, where the company were speaking and have confirmed that uh, Kinect is only available at retail now um, until stocks run out. So in other words, as soon as the current lot of Xbox One Kinect devices has sold, there won't be any more that are going to appear on store shelves to be replenishing the, um, the somewhat less than popular device. And... Honestly, you can kind of see the writing on the wall for some time. Microsoft, for years now, for a couple of years now, they, they didn't say that they weren't supporting the Kinect, but you could just tell that they weren't marketing it so much. Like, early versions of the Xbox One um, marketing campaigns, every single one of them. Of course, you saw the Kinect, right? The Kinect sensor was always there. By the time I bought an Xbox One, which is uh, late... 2014 if memory serves it actually it was around the time of destiny i think i actually got the xbox one with destiny and at that point there were bundles with connect and there were bundles without connect fast forward a couple of more years and basically the bundles were just not even a thing with connect anymore and then of course they released the xbox one s and you needed the adapter for connect and well as soon as we saw the Xbox One X, very similar, it was pretty obvious that at this point, I wouldn't say developers, all developers had given up, but let's face it, how many Kinect games actually are there that you're interested in, even slightly interested in? And that's kind of the point, isn't it? So, this technology will still exist, but just be obviously changed and tweaked, and that's going to be for HoloLens, but... When it comes to Connect in its current native form, which you're plugging into your system, uh, not so much. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.